you Sheridan. Oh I love you. That's oh, such a nice welcome. It's time to feel good about Gilgood. <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks for having me back. You're I love it. Sheridan yeah. anytime babe. Opening night at London's Gilgood Theatre until Saturday July 27th. Openingnightmusical.com for tickets. Tickets available now. Openingnightmusical.com How's it been for you Sheridan? It's been amazing. Do you know what? It's so different to anything I've done before. Like it's in a once in a lifetime opportunity to do this. It's like, it's a, it's a very different musical. It's very brave, new, bold. It's never been done before. Um, so it's not like doing a rehash of a, you know, any old yeah, musical. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought yeah, it, no, was a, it was a new new version of something that's been done before, but it's not no, it's brand it's new. it's brand new. And also it's really different. It's not like a, you know, a jazz hands kind of singy dancey show. It's quite yeah. a dark play. And they use cameras in it. So you can either watch it as a film, or but it's like live every night. On it's like t- getting one take of a show. You know what I mean? Every night. Um, but it's very different, new, exciting. I'm so proud of it and the company and to work with people of this caliber like Eva Van Hove and Rufus Wainwright. It's like it's just so different and so out there and the biggest challenge of my life. So I'm enjoying it. The biggest challenge of your yeah, life. And is. let's face it. We have met a few of those along this rocky road, haven't we? <laughs> we have met a few challenges. So, so what happens is, so Tilly and Felix went to see it last night and they said, it's you're off the chain in this. They say you're as good as it possibly can be. And so you have the live stage action going on and there's a big screen behind and you're seeing things projected onto that, but it's only things that are happening live. So it's yeah. like a documentary that's being made of the performance on... Th- any night people go and see it? Yeah, it's always live. And there's a bit where I go outside and that's live every night. Right, OK. And now let's talk... Actually, let's talk about, first of all, who your character is. Right. Um, what what we can... As much as we can say about her situation, without yeah. spoiling it for people who are going to go and see it, yeah. then we need to talk about you going outside the theatre <laughs> whilst the performance is on as part of the performance. Yeah, that's right, it, I mean, it's so out there. It's brilliant. All right, so, so who is she, this woman? So I play Mersel, who's this American actress. She's It's like a play within a play. And yeah. she's... She's having a bit of a nervous breakdown, uh, to say the least. Um, and one of the fans, her fans, dies at stage door, and then that sends her into this really dark. Um, so spiral. she's already in a dark place. Yes, at this when you first meet her, right? And she hates the play that she's doing. She starts improvising and going off piste, and it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's so layered. If you want, if you want to think <laughs> and be really challenged, right. it's the show for you. But um, but yeah, so Myrtle, she's a great character. She's kind of hanging on by her fingernails, and you never know if she's going to make opening night. So that's the kind of. So, the, yeah, so it has been a film, though, but it's never been on stage before. Yeah, it was a film, but it's never been on stage. And Evo Van Hove, who directs it, um, and then Rufus Wainwright has written the music to it. But it's kind of... The music's interweaved with the dialogue, so it's right. kind of... It's just, just brilliant. It's just brave and bold. So she's and, in a dark place anyhow. Yeah. yeah she's yeah, living yeah. on her nerves. She's yeah. fed up with the place she's in. Yeah. She drinks too much. She doesn't get enough sleep, etc., yeah. etc., etc. Et yeah. And then something terrible happens. Yes. So it could be her redemption. It could not... It could send her into a deeper, darker, more infinite hole of, I don't know, impossibility. And this happens because she's outside the stage door one night and the fan rushes up to her... Yeah, that's right. And, and the fan is is killed right so uh, spoilers <laughs> but that then she starts uh, seeing this girl you know and then and having a psychosis and right. um yeah it goes very 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 dark. and lots of songs interwoven yeah amazing haunting music by rufus wainwright right. you know and so some people absolutely are kind of up on their feet by the end and loving it and then other people if they're expecting what i would usually do which is a show where you're talking to the audience or you know a big kind of jazz hand show busy show um this is more like the audience are looking in on a theater family so you're watching what's going on you know we don't really acknowledge that they're there wow. sometimes so it's just so out there and it's as an actress i just wanted to challenge myself to something new you know right so it's being filmed yeah so so it's being filmed in the auditorium with cameras and the audience get filmed too by and the, the way. yeah the audience are on the, yeah. they're on the, this sort of the live documentary yeah because as, as people arrive yeah. that's shown later on in the show so pe- everyone's on camera <laughs> so anything goes <laughs> there's no wings as well so there's no you right. know on a theater stage usually yeah. the, but you see everything that's going on so it's the so band naked is naked so, you see, I'm getting goosebumps. So I love because it's punk, isn't it? This yeah, is, it's, it's so punk out there. I love all this stuff. I love it all. So, no, because it's completely deconstructed. Yeah, it is completely. It's funny because um, Amy White, the premiere of Back to Black was in Leicester Square last night, right? Um, and obviously, when you're when you're 
you're at a premiere, they have cameras outside, and to fill in the hour beforehand, you do see everybody arriving, right. don't you, in, on the red carpet. That's projected onto the big screen inside, so it's a similar kind of thing. Yeah. Did you, the Gilgood Theatre, how far away is that? I always get making mistakes. Just revenue. It's, it's so it's not that far from um, Leicester Square. No, it's not. And it's it's mid, right in the middle of Soho. So right. Friday and Saturday nights, you can imagine when I'm Right, outside. so can you tell us why you go out of the theatre or not? Or do you want to keep Yeah, it? well, yeah. So th- there's a scene where she's very, very drunk. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and I'm sat outside and the cameras come outside and the company come outside. So all the actors I'm working with are brilliant and they're playing like the director or the producer of this play with a play right and they all come outside and find me slumped in soho drunk and right. i'm crawling across the floor of soho every night and it's live every single day oh my goodness and what's <laughs> there has to be security there doesn't there there is security around just because it, it can get a bit is it close chaotic. to the road or is it is it by the stage door or it's what behind the theater so it's yeah it's, it's a live road but they kind of hold hold it while we do this scene but um, but I'm covered in bruises. And what <laughs> about the weather? Over. What about if it's pouring down with rain? Well, they have to. They come out with brollies just because we're, <laughs> we're, we're wearing you know? microphones. I know it's bonkers. It's, but it's never been done. I love it. I just think it's so How exciting. How long does that last for? That bit. That bit's. Um, I don't know. It's, it's quite short. But then once I'm in the theatre, I'm stumbling down all the stairs, and then I arrive on the stage. So it's <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And so do you have to because in Amy, in the Amy film, you know, yeah. which is um, it's not dissimilar, is it, from a character point of view? You know, yeah. the, the trials and tribulations I know, that Amy. I, I knew lovely Amy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Infos, infamously went through. Yeah. Um, when when you when your character Myrtle is singing, yeah, does, do you have to sing drunk as well? No, it well, there's a big song at the end that um, she f- finally has gone. I've left. Yeah, careful oh, with the spoilers. Oh, yeah, careful no, no, with no the spoilers. spoilers. Yeah, I kept, anyway, yeah, uh, she yeah. sobers up. <laughs> but um, but I do sing this big song at the end, and then there's like a resolution. But I won't give it all away. Come and uh, see it if you want. No, not you. Absolutely I mean, people. fascinating. <laughs> Band and you as well, and Chris. in between shows, especially yeah. matinee day, what are your matinee days? Wednesdays and Saturdays. Okay, openingnightmusical.com, Wednesdays and Saturday matinees. It's there until Saturday, 27th of July. And um, I'm hearing from Tilly and from Felix, and they Aww. always tell me the truth because they have to, because then I'm going to say on the radio, and if we don't tell the truth, then people won't listen to the show. Well, they will, but they won't believe anything we say anymore, so there's no point. <laughs> Aww, they say you, you are awesome in this. Oh, so thank you. The you, whole company are amazing. If you like your Sheridan Smith and you like this deconstructed punk theatre, you know, some, sometimes I go home from this show and I just thought, that wasn't punk enough today. I mean, we're not that punk anyway, but we're more punk than people you're think. Cool. You're so cool. I think as well, the thing about theatre, I think we need new stuff like that. We well, you have to. You know, it's brave and bold and you can't keep doing the same thing. No. If you want to keep theatre alive, same as you, you've got this great show and you're you're cool. But sometimes, <laughs> we're, sometimes we're too smooth for our own good, I think. And um, yesterday I was talking to Noah because Noah loves art. He's doing loads of art at school because he's, he's, he's got his oh, O level thing coming up. Oh, and um, we were going through different, we were going through Rothko yesterday. We're talking about Rothko at the weekend. And, yeah. You know, the reason that Rothko is so amazing is, well, loads of loads of different reasons, but there are certain colours in Rothko paintings that you can't see unless they combine next to each other. So wow. there are certain colours that the human eye can't, can't discern unless. They're a combination of colours, and then we can see that colour, and that's what Rothko does. So that's around incredible. all his all his shapes and different impressions, you, you you see that you're fascinated by Rothko paintings, and that's why because he allows you to, us human beings to see colours we can't otherwise see unless he mixes his palette that way. That's incredible. And then we got onto different paintings and different impressions and different portraits, and I we we went through them. And I said, "What do you think about this? What do you think about this?" So we talked about Van Gogh's flowers. Right. And, you know, it's the sunflowers. And I said, what are you seeing here? He said, some sunflowers. And I said, so what do you think he's painted? You know, and the the answer is, I mean, there's no right answer. It's whatever Noah thinks. But of, you know, a lot of people say, well, true artists, they don't paint necessarily what you're looking at. They paint themselves looking at that. Right. So so Van Gogh's sunflowers are a represent, representation of how he feels. Now, I'm getting back to the theatre here. No, I, I don't want to go and see... With, I'm not even going to say the names because it's not fair. But there's loads, there's like 95% of the productions of the West End. I personally don't want to go and see them. Loads of other people do. Yeah, yeah. But I know what's going to happen. They're going to be perfect recreations of the book, the story, the exactly. play. It's been going on for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. It's been on in New York. It's travelled. I want to see this. Absolutely. Because I don't know what I'm going to get. Thank you. That's it. And with Ivo van Hove, the, the director, that's how he 
sees it as art. You just go and watch it and you take your own interpretation of it. Yeah. And if you like it or you don't, but, you know, but that's how no, he works. It's exactly that, it's art. Well, it's not like or don't like, is it even? You just sit yeah, there and you go, right, OK, bring it Bring it on. Bring it on, bring exactly. Bring it on. OK, you have a little bit of a warm-up. Open your <laughs> chakras, yeah? Yes. You sit down and you say, OK. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. Exactly. Okay, I don't I care. That. I don't care how my Sheridan Smith comes <laughs> as long as she arrives fully formed on stage doing whatever she thinks I should be paying my hard earned cash to go and see. Oh, I love you, Chris. No, seriously, I'm not joking. <laughs> I love I'm not the joking, best. Shred. I am and you, you talk about the mat- the reason I mentioned the matinee performances is because you don't allow yourself to sleep in between. Why not? I don't because it's such a roller coaster. It's emotionally and physically so demanding. So if I sleep, then I have to like kind of really boost myself back up to do the second See, I show. I think you'd need to sleep more because no, of that. No, I just have to power through on a two show day. What? It's, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's I emotionally draining. So then I'll I'll get home and cuddle Billy and sleep then. <laughs> so you know this that this that well, we talk about it quite a lot. So when you smile, right? Your brain doesn't know the difference between if you're smiling because you're happy or you're happy because you're smiling, which is why when you're fed up, it sometimes helps to smile because it can trigger happiness. Right. And so the blurring of the lines of the emotion when you're doing this play, based on the fact that our brain doesn't know the difference know. between we're, are we feeling something because something's happened or does something happen because we feel something? How do you survive that from an emotional point of view when you have to go to all these... Especially yeah. with, with Myrtle. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely... Who's not the happiest bunny in the no, pet shop, she's is not, she? She's not, she's not. But I can... Do you know what? I, the rehearsal process was hard, finding all those emotions and living in it all day. But now the show is set. It's actually very... I, I use it like therapy. I leave... I cry so much on that stage. And, do you actually? Yeah, yeah like, so much. And kind of throw myself into it and then I can leave it on the stage and go home to my son. Do you know what I mean? So in a way it's so cathartic. I actually love it. You should be paying them. <laughs> Not true, by the way. She worked so hard in this play. It's ridiculous. <laughs> is it fair or is it a musical? Musical play? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a musical, but it's got the music's interwoven with the dialogue. So right. it's kind of, it's very clever. And How song, how many songs does a play have to have before it stops being a play and becomes a musical? How many songs does this have? I don't know. Have? Well, Rufus Wainwright's written so many brilliant songs for this. Did you meet him? Yeah. Yeah, he was there. He was there for all three rehearsals. He's Whoa. so cool. I mean, no, it was, just tell us about that. Tell us about. And how he's cool. amazing. Tell he's, us about the cool of the, the Wainwright. The Wainwright is so cool. <laughs> um, he was there for the whole of rehearsals. He messages me all the time. It's an honour to sing his songs, and he wrote them when he was in a dark place. Right. So each song means a lot to him. So that it is an honour to get to sing them every night. You know. So you get home. You are exercised of all ills. <laughs> I can't get my demons out. Yeah. So. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Because I, I dream a lot because I wake up every 90 minutes. So I wake up in REM sleep. So yeah. I actually now know when I'm going to wake up. I think, oh, this is a dream where I'm going to wake up and I wake up. Um, because you've offloaded stuff <laughs> on stage every night, yeah. how are you dreaming? How are your dreams? Oh, and... my dreams are weird at the minute. Are they? But yeah, yeah. I'm getting real weird. I, I, so you're getting weirded sh- out on stage. You're getting weird. You're still getting... <laughs> I'm I, still thought, getting... I thought one of the advances would be like... You... <laughs> You'd be able to have a better sleep. Well, they're a little bit like anxiety dreams, you know what I mean? They've got the characters in there, all the com- the cast are in there. Um, but they're, they're getting it better now. It, it, was, it was more leading up to the opening <laughs> night that they, I was getting really bad anxiety dreams, like being on a roller coaster because of the emotional roller coaster I go on. But but now they're calming down a bit. Right, so, so we've had it. So opening night has already enjoyed its opening night. It has, and it was a great night actually because it, it was more of a gala night, um, and because it, it, it's a, it's a, it's about. What, a that, th- what does that mean? So it's like a load of theatre people. So right. kind of they kind of got it because it is about a theatre family. So right, um, and they kind of got all the kind of moments of madness like this character she's a nightmare like she won't i mean my character goes totally off piece and won't do the lines in the show and stomps about and i mean she's not that likable sometimes but it's fun to play all those different kind of layers to her all right so so we're we're into the run now it's a complicated play does that mean you can't have fun with it because it's all you always have to stay focused or you can now begin to have a bit of fun. Now I can begin to have fun. In fact, I love it. I what, how, what does that mean? What does well, that mean? Because I love the actors that I'm working with. Like, like the Ben who plays opposite me. Uh, you know, it, we, you could, the thing about Eva Van Hove, he wants it to be different every night. Right. So Ben will do different things every night. So right. it keeps it fresh. And so it's always like exciting to go out there and play with all this amazing company. Does anybody ever? I mean, sure, I'm sure you've been asked this before. But you know when you do the bit outside. Yeah. And you're you're. I sp- are you are you lying down? <laughs> Slump. In the street. Is that Sheridan Smith? <laughs> well, it's right between two pubs as well, so the people are all outside <laughs> hammered. That's so funny. <laughs> and they all want to come and try and help me. And sometimes I pretend I'm dancing because the tunes are blasting out the. Oh, 
club. That is so. <laughs> that is really punk, isn't it? It's really punk. That. Well, what's, I love the it. Mo- what's the most interesting thing that's happened since? since the, you've well, been we here? couldn't. We they wouldn't. The security wouldn't let me go out too far the other night because someone was being arrested on and restrained oh, this on the has floor. Got to change. And uh, and I was like, just let me go. It's fine. It doesn't matter. And they were like, no, no, no. You can't go too far over that way. So I had to start a little bit closer to the door. But other than that, that's all. That's no, happened. that's got to change. Come on, security. Come on, you like know. I want them all walking past and joining in, but the, they they won't let that. How many security guys do you have there? It, there's a couple, but Danny is the, the head of security. And he, nobody messes with Danny. Nobody messes with Danny. Danny no. in the corner. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but he won't let too many people come. But I would love it. I'd love it the more to get involved. But I guess it's a bit a bit dangerous. All right. How what happens afterwards? <laughs> Why? So so you go? Do you go straight home, or do you do you treat yeah, yourself straight home once a week or something like that? Which I tell you what, though, the company we we try and do something like we went to this darts place the other night, all as a company, just because it's nice. Because it you know. How it's are ge- the errors? <laughs> I don't think I threw a single dart all night. I just talked, but um, but we but we we like we like going out. And... Is that like the putt shack? You can because there's a putting place you can go yeah, with drinks. Yeah, it's like is a it... place called flight a flight club in town somewhere. Flight club. Yeah, it's we... a good fun night out. You guys should go. The team, are, the team, have, they've got a, a night out on Friday. Oh really? It's good flight to do club. that, isn't it? You should do it every week with your company because first you... rule of flight club. <laughs> don't invite Vassas and Chris. <laughs> yeah, we're NFI us too. Oh, are you? NFI. <laughs> Yeah, the young bucks are out on the road, oh. and there's nobody going to stop him. <laughs> well, have fun, guys. That whole I thing. I might join you. <laughs> <laughs> that whole oh, oh Sheridan is invited. <laughs> oh la di da. That whole post theatre Friday Saturday night though, you know when yeah. people have been working, yeah, uh, and you go to the to the bars where the, all the West End guys. I mean that is yeah. some crack, isn't it? That that is a real sort of brother and sisterhood, isn't it? It is. I mean I can't do that anymore, <laughs> just because I'm getting old and I've got a little three year old. Who's listening? Hi, Billy. Hi, Billy. He's listening. Mummy's coming home soon. <laughs> um, but it is. I used to always go out and do those nights, and 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 the younger cr- uh, cast members do. And it's it is. You're right. It's a com- camaraderie, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Well, listen, it sounds, it uh, sounds I, compelling. Fully, you would get it, totally. Oh, mate, I would love you to see it. I get it already. Opening night at London's Gilgood Theatre um, until Saturday, July 27th, and then you're working again straight off the back of that. You've got a couple of days Two off. days after. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, she's very much in demand, this smithy girl. Oh. Tickets available now via openingnightmusical.com. Are you going to see the Amy film? I'm definitely going to oh, see the Amy film, great. but it will be heartbreaking, I bet. But. It's, it is. It is. I mean, the the first sort of, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, it, it's great. It's classic biopic. You right. know, they're setting her up. It's when she's younger. It's her in a bedroom writing some songs. Yeah. And the, the girl who plays Amy, I mean, she is just off the chain. Really? Yeah. I can't wait to see it. But the film really takes off. And th- this is not to say it's not good before and because it has to, you know, we know, don't we? Because you know better yeah. than I do. Yeah. You, you've got to sow the seeds. Uh, great films you know really take their time in the first 20 30 40 minutes because they have to yeah you know and it really takes off when she meets blake in the good mix of pub oh, in camden oh my gosh it re- i mean that that so sad, first meeting it? of those two because it's all about her story is very much all about the lost love yeah. of her life yeah. and love in general and her mum and dad and her nan who she loses as well it's yeah. all in the film but they've nailed this scene where she first meets Blake because it's so fiery, it's so like powerful. What? It jump and you go, oh, oh my gosh, it oh, a, it was a love like no other, wasn't it? Oh my so, god, yeah. You know, he comes in, he's in the bar. Have you been in the Good Mixer in Camden? No. Okay, I used to go in there all the time. It'll be very busy for the next few weeks. Let me tell you, it's still there. The pub is still there. The pool table that Amy played on is still there. They oh. won't take it out, and the queue to play on the pool table is ridiculous all the time. Wow. And um, it's, the, it's the same pub that they go in in Widnail and I. Oh my god, I love that film. Yeah, it's the same pub on the corner of I think it's Inverness Street in Camden, and um, and and she's in she's in the non pool table side, and then Blake comes in and he's just won a load of money on the horses, and she thinks, who's this? Who's this? firecracker and then he goes over to the pool table and then she, he puts a song on the jukebox the Shangri-Las this all girl band and she's like who? and then he mimes lip syncs perfectly to the Shangri-Las uh, it's, um, uh, and it's just it's ama- anyway it's amazing oh, I've got goosebumps I have to watch it that it is amazing did you ever meet her? 
I was, yeah, I knew Amy. Did you yeah, know her yeah. very well? I knew her quite well, yeah. Did yeah. you actually? Yeah, I did. I worked, she came um, on the show a couple I of times, but I didn't know her. But, I mean, super oh, talented. So talented. So, so talented and troubled and just wanting to be loved. Yeah. That's what, that's what I got. And um, we got um, Eddie Marsden on. Oh, he's a brilliant actor. Who plays her so dad. he plays her dad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I will have to watch it. Oh, mate. Yeah, it's, if it's I can bring myself to. Yeah. Sheridan. Thank you I for having me. I love you, Chris. Love I love being here. You. I love you. We love. We do. <laughs> oh, I'm so chuffed that you had me in. And I've got your hat. We've got matching hats. Yeah, you got the you got the. Um, I've got the base court, baseball baseball yeah, cap yeah, version. Yeah, yes. yeah. All right. Can we have another controlled round of applause for the wonderful oh, Sheridan Smith? Theatre, <laughs> punk theatre at its very contemporary best. Openingnightmusical.com for tickets. Love Thank you. you.